customers, vendors, and employees. How do we do that? We go into what I would call the centers over here, like the sales center is what I might used to be called in the old version, the customer center, and we can manage and track our customer information, for example. And so we'd have our customers over here. On the expenses on our vendor side, expenses, which I might call the vendor center, I still call it that because that's it, there we have our vendors. And then on the payroll side, we have our, what I call our employee or payroll center uh, over here. And then we can process our payroll if we're doing payroll within the system. So that's the general navigation process. Now, when we're setting up the company file, we have to then do that one time setup process that needs to be the foundation. Like if you're making a building, if you're building like a, a, a building or something like that, an office building, or a house, the first thing you need to do is put down the foundation before you can have the cyclical things that would go on in the house, the day-to-day -day living or whatever, right? So how do you do that? Well, you'd have to then, that's usually in the cog. So within the cog, we have our lists, which are gonna be the fundamental kind of things that we need to set up. And we'll go over those in our setup process with our new company file, the main ones being the chart of accounts that we'll take a look at in more detail later and then the products and services. Those are the main two lists that we would have to take a look at. Uh, and, and then you could, the other ones are important, but they're not like the foundational things, the payment methods, the terms, attachments, tags, if you're using them, custom fields, if you, if you need the custom fields and the recurring transactions. But the big ones, chart of accounts, products and services, those are the lists that once they're set up, you're not gonna be looking at them all the time. I'll go back to the desktop Although you, 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 you look at them occasionally, but, but those are the foundational items you need to set up first when you start a new uh, company file. So those are in the cog up top. Also in the cog are our company information, account settings and whatnot, and then uh, manage users and that kind of stuff. These are, the, these are the foundational type of items. So we'll talk more about the lists and these foundational items in future presentations. Right now, I just wanna look at uh, the account and settings. So let's go into this one because this was set up uh, when, we, when we did the interview kind of process. So we have the company information up top, the company name and so on and so forth. If I go into this, you could add a logo. I'll just add a quick logo here. I can add this and then add a logo. This logo might be something that you can use to populate on your invoices and stuff, for example. So I'll just add this guy as a logo. And uh, obviously you might wanna look to see how you can optimize you know, the size of the logo and, and make sure you have your professional logo. Company name showing on sales form and purchase orders connected to the business network. I'm gonna say that's the same as the company name and then the EIN number. Notice that, you're, that you're, this has got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a nine digit number. Now, if you're a sole proprietor, you might not have a company number. If you don't have any employees, the EIN number is called an employer identification number in the United States. If you don't have any employees, you might ask, why do I need an employer identification number? You may not, but if you're working with other businesses, like many small businesses do, then they're going to want to issue you a 1099. And if you don't have an EIN number, they're going to want your social security number, which one isn't secure because now you have to give them your personal number and two doesn't look as professional. So if you don't have an EIN number, you might want to get one, even if you're a sole proprietorship with no employees, pretty easy to do going to the IRS website and you can do it basically online at this point in time. I'm pretty, so you can check that out if you want to. So company type. So we set this up in the setup process. We said we were a sole proprietorship versus a partnership, limited liability company, small business, so on. We talked a little bit about the differences between uh, these items uh, at that time. So I won't go over it in detail here. We put our industry in place. So notice this is something that you can change if you didn't have it proper in the first setup process, noting that because you can change it, you can see that it doesn't really have an impact on the chart of accounts, which you would think would be the main impact when you first set up the company file. And then you've got the company email. The email might be important because you, that might be on the forms 
that we're going to be putting uh, in place, such as the invoice form, uh, customer facing email, we're going to say it's the same. If you want a different one, you can uncheck that. The company phone number, I'm going to say 999-99999. So that might be important because it might be on the forms as well. And this show on the sales form. So we might say this is website dot com so right is whatever our website name maybe it should be get great so let's just put ggg.com no that doesn't work for some reason let's say website.com so we'll save that that might be on the forms the address so here's the address address where your company is based this could be important because if you do billing information it might be necessary if you have shipping information then that might be the default and with sales tax the, the state that you're in and locale might be important as you set up your sales tax, which we'll take a look at later. So we set that up when we did our setup process. Uh, company address, what you entered. Yes, I'm gonna say do. And then customer facing address. Notice this is the same. So I'm gonna say, yep, keep it as the same. Legal address, I'm gonna keep that as the same. If it were different, then of course you can change it there. So you have a different billing address possibly for the payments that you're making to QuickBooks versus your company address, you can change those, which might change things like what the sales tax is going to be calculated based on and what's going to be on the invoices. Communications with uh, Intuit down here, uh, you have your options on this side as well. So that's the general setup process. That's what has been put in place. In essence, when we set up the company file, you can see a lot of this stuff was in basically that interview process. I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to say, do you want to leave without saving? I'll say, uh, I'll say, do I want to leave without saving? I think I saved it. So I'll save it and I'll say yes. And so that's the setup process that we have thus far. So going forward, then what we will do is we'll go back into this cog and we'll take a look at some more detail of some of the items in here, like uh, the users, for example, and and then we'll take a look at some of the lists and set those up. We'll set up our, our products and we'll set up our chart of accounts. And then we'll enter our beginning balances. That'll be the first part of the course that we'll, we'll need to lay out. And then we can get into constructing our transactions using the forms. And we'll do that from scratch. So as we do that, we'll see the creation of the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, and related reports as they're built from the base up from nothing on up and we'll see that uh, process and then we'll do you know bank reconciliations and we'll do period end uh, adjusting entries and we'll also track this information in the centers customer center or sales area vendor center expense center and the payroll centers to see how we might manage the communication with our our business affiliates the vendors customers employees as we go through our, our standard accounting cycle